The conditionable trait has now been added to the root object in Laravel. Now, what does that mean? What even is the conditionable trait if you've never seen it? Well, let's dive in first, and then I'm going to show you a couple of examples where I would use this personally. There is already a really good example of this over on the pull request, but I'm going to look at two everyday examples that I would use probably quite often. Okay, so first of all, let's dive straight over to the root object. So let's open up this under rooting and root. And you can see here, sure enough, we have this conditionable trait. Let's go ahead and open that up and see what we've got. So we have a when method. Now, if you've used Laravel for a while, you'll know that a lot of things you can tack when onto the end of. And that will go ahead and allow you to, under a certain condition, manipulate this object within the callback. So have a look through this. Uh, we're not going to go through everything here, but let's type straight over to the root object, which we get back when we go ahead and build up a root from this facade. And let's see what we can do with it. OK, so let's go and build out a simple example here. Let's say that we had some sort of endpoint. So let's just call this middleware just to knock out this example. And we'll create out a just a short closure to return the text middleware just to keep things super simple. So let's head over to that route and there it is. Now let's say that we had some middleware that we wanted to add on to here. Well, let's go ahead and build that middleware out really quickly. So I'm gonna make this middleware, I'm gonna call this production only middleware. So let's go ahead and create this out. Maybe it does something that you don't necessarily want to happen in local de development. Well, let's go ahead and apply this middleware and let's put that in there. So production only middleware. And let's actually head over to there and do something in here just so we can see it's actually doing something. OK, so you can see we get production only and then middleware, which is what we're returning from there. Now, let's say that we don't want this production only specific middleware to be run in a local environment. What do we do? Well, previously, we would have had to do something like this, some sort of condition inside of here registered this otherwise doing that i don't even know if this is going to work yeah it does work but obviously it doesn't look great so what can we do now well because we have that conditionable trait on our root object we can now say when so what's the condition well we're going to say app is local or you could do it the other way around and say when app is in production we want to add this middleware it doesn't really matter then we have a closure in here. Now, what do we get passed into this closure? Well, we get whatever this is applied on, whatever this trait has been applied on, we get back in here, which happens to be a root object. Now, what we can't do is type in this because we've already got the facade pulled in here. So let's go ahead and just manually pull in the routing and router or root. And let's just call this root object. I can't think of a better name for it at the moment, but we'll type in that under root object and we'll pass the root in so now that we've got this back this closure will only be run when this is true so that means that when we are in a local environment we can continue to chain on much like we would be able to do here and do something like without middleware so we can do that on there but now we can do it only within this closure under this condition so we can say without middleware and we can say production only middleware and we should be good so when we go ahead and give this a refresh we get production only middleware I'm currently in production over here. So let's change this over to local, give that a refresh and sure enough, it disappears. So this is just one example, but you can manipulate your route in any way you want within whatever condition that you need. This condition could be absolutely anything. And then you can, can just continue to build up or remove stuff from your route. OK, so another example that I would probably use quite often is to do with rate limiting. So let's go ahead and create out another route here. And let's say we have a limited root. And again, let's just create our short closure here to return some text. Head over to this in the browser. So let's say limited. And let's go ahead and apply the throttle middleware to this to throttle this under a certain amount of requests. So let's say five requests. And by default, this will be every one minute. So obviously, if we go ahead and give this a refresh multiple times, eventually we're locked out with a 429 status. Now that's fine and perfect for production, but obviously when we're locally developing, this is probably gonna get in the way and it's gonna mean we're gonna to have to clear out this throttle manually. It's gonna be a massive pain. So what do we do? Well, we can go ahead and say when and app is local. Let's go ahead and get rid of that middleware. So again, we can go ahead and pull in this closure in here. Let's pull in that root object, which I'm sure we could think of a better name for at some point. 
and let's go ahead and get rid and exclude this middleware. So let's say without middleware. Now with this, we have to provide the exact same name and properties. We'd have to say throttle five here, but that should work. So if we head over to EMV, make sure this is local and give this a refresh. There we go. Now on a local environment, this is not throttled. So we've looked at an example of doing this just with middleware, but you could do this with absolutely anything. So next time you have something that you're chaining onto a route and you want to go ahead and change it under a certain condition, this is now conditionable. So you can do that very, very easily without wrapping stuff in if statements or moving stuff over to your controller constructor. Now, there's another way that you can do this. So just to give you a really good idea of this, let's say that we wanted to do exactly the same thing as this, but only throttle this in production. Well, in that case, we can make this a bit clearer. So we could take this middleware here and we can say app is production and then we can only throttle it in production. So let's say root middleware throttle five. So that's obviously a lot cleaner. It just depends on your needs and how you prefer to write code. But obviously that's gonna work in exactly the same way. We're just switching around the conditions and that gets rid of an extra line of code. So a really cool addition by just adding that conditional trait to the root object, we now get more control over building up roots with a simple chain of the when method. Of course, we've looked at two very simple examples here, just relating to middleware, but you can go ahead and apply this to anything that you would usually build up when you access the root object.